Trains! Now they're a thing, aren't they? I've always found trains and locomotives compelling, and there's a number of reasons for that. It's because of the long journeys where you're forced into a state of relaxation. It's like the original ASMR. There's also the fact that these locomotives are huge beasts which feel alive, especially if you go back to steam trains. But there's also the very direct route of them, the lack of decision. You jump on a train, you go somewhere, the efficiency surrounding that. But anyway, I'm here to talk about Japanese trains because Japanese people like trains. They like trains so much that you can even play a game called Densho to Go in Japanese arcade since 1996. The premise is you drive a train and have to stop with pinpoint accuracy at stations. And it was so popular that home releases came, such as for the Japanese PlayStation. And to go with it, you got a whopping controller like this. You always knew that games with dedicated controllers were a special experience. It's like Nights into Dreams with its three-dimensional pad. But this is a whole new level. This thing, which simulates train controls or, you know, a very close approximation, is just one hefty beast. Look at this. I mean, that is a thing of beauty, isn't it? And I mean, how could you resist playing this, even if you don't like trains or driving in a linear route and just stopping and starting? How could you turn that down when you have this? For this demonstration, I'm going to need that Japanese PlayStation, being as Densha to Go is a region exclusive. So whilst I'm setting that up, let's explore some of the Densha to Go backstory. Developed by Taito, the arcade version announced in 1996 and released in early 97 served as a somewhat limited train simulator, plonked into an environment usually reserved for the action genre. Well, in the West at least, in Japan they absolutely love the focused linear attention that these games demanded. Based around real Japanese train routes, progress demanded the exceptional precision we've come to associate with Eastern titles. Players would not only be required to memorise routes, but also bring their trains to a halt within a 2 metre space at each station. Of course, this high difficulty ensured a continuous flow of coins, but also created a highly skilled following, who could storm through the game like, well, some kind of train god, really. This following meant releases soon appeared for the PlayStation, but also cropped up on PC, Wonder Swan, and even the Game Boy Color, again exclusive to Japan. I mean, what crazy bastard would want to play this outside of Japan? Well, I certainly would for one, along with a cult following who play the game throughout the world. You can opt to drive using a standard controller, but it's much more fun to use one of the dedicated devices, which come in a variety of forms. I have the handle-based design, which although not as complex as some of the others, suits me just fine. Now, I actually have both Densha to Go 1 and 2, both in lovely dual cases and with informative instruction manuals. Really, I just like looking at the Japanese writing. It makes everything look much more exciting. Upon loading the disc, we're graced with a dazzling intro. Followed by the title screen and lots of Japanese text. Thankfully, you can stumble your way into the game without understanding Japanese. Playing the brief tutorial, you get the gist that moving the handle towards you speeds up your locomotive, whilst moving it away applies varying levels of brake force. Out of the buttons, C is the most important, as it activates the horn, and as you'll see, that can be pretty useful. 
Now the first game is probably the hardest, requiring pinpoint accuracy, so I won't be playing it for long. But here on the tutorial mode, you get fed instructions with visual aids, so you can't really go wrong. Now apologies for the flickering screen here by the way, my camera can only capture power refresh rates, so with the screen outputting at 60Hz we're not fully in sync with the CRT's electron gun. You can see here that we're coming into a station, so I've got an instruction to adjust my braking. The speed to the lower left is around 20 km per hour, and you can see the distance left to stop in the lower right. Now this is where accuracy is required, and with my helper here, it's easy, we can pull up safely and precisely into the station. On my own, it's quite a lot harder. I'm now going over the schedule shown to the top left, so I'm getting a point deducted for every second. Once we get to zero, it's game over. You can see with lots of stopping and starting, I've actually overshot here by 2 metres, which isn't a lot, but it means game over. Still not bad for my first attempt, I thought, but this game is really unforgiving. So let's move on to Denshi Go 2, released in 1999, and again based on an arcade release. Again, we get an excellent manual, showing different control methods at our disposal, and a plethora of Japanese text. Loading up, we get a slightly more fancy introduction. And we get the odd English translation. You can see here that Denture to Go actually translates to go. Let's go by train. And that's what we'll do. Now, although the second game is also known as the High Speed Edition, featuring faster Japanese lines, it's actually more forgiving as well, and it just feels a little bit more cohesive. Again, we have an introduction, and we're into the game. We have to watch out because there's a speed limit almost straight away, so you have to stick to 35. And from here we're just cruising. It's quite nice. I can see why people get into this, because it's quite relaxing and you want to keep playing. You, even though it's a linear route, you just want to keep playing to get those timings perfect. And there's something, something relaxing and soothing about that. So. Oh. God, and <laughs> obviously you have to hit the horn as well, where appropriate. Now this station I don't need to stop at, so I can blast through at high speed. And I'm actually uh, eight seconds ahead of schedule, so good times. Oh my God! So what's happened there is massively broken the speed limit and the emergency brake has been thrown. It's really a game where you have to you get you have to get a feeling for the train as you play. Uh, I definitely have not got any feeling for the train whatsoever. It's so hard to stop within a meter. So I'll leave myself playing away because I've actually really enjoyed this experience and it's a game I'll definitely be going back to in the near future. Of course, there's no way I could come away without mentioning the cup holder. It's designed to fit one of those little plastic cups. It doesn't cater too well to the Slopes game room beer, but it's a nice touch as long as your drink doesn't interfere with the handle, at least. 
Okay, fine, it's not actually a cup holder, no matter how much I want it to be. It's really for the train driver's watch, which you could buy at the time. There was also a 20th anniversary edition produced in 2017, which looks all kinds of shiny. Another notable feature are the little animations which play when you perhaps break too violently and send passengers flying. It's this attention to detail which makes this a great set of games to play. I'm actually a little bewildered they never made it to western territories, but then trains aren't embedded in our culture quite like the Japanese where becoming a driver on a main line is comparable to being an airline pilot. But still, the potential of being able to crash, who could resist that? Now aside from these two games, there's a plethora of other titles in the Denture to Go series on a multitude of platforms, including the Dreamcast, complete with its own custom controllers. And it's a game which has stayed with us, well, the Japanese at least, even in modern times, with a new Denture to Go released in 2018 for arcades and based on the Unreal Engine. Unfortunately, you'll probably have to haul your ass down to a Japanese arcade to play it. Unless you import the plug and play version, which reminds me of those car driving simulators from the 90s that you could plug straight into your telly, or even grab Denture to Go Final for the PS2 or PC. Like I said, there's a lot to this series. So, I would recommend just grabbing a Japanese PlayStation like me and experiencing this from the beginning. Anyway, thank you for watching, there's some more things you can click here. In any case, I hope you have a great evening.